How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we're going to talk about the China virus wreaking havoc on the U.S. economy to the tune of 3.28 million jobless claims in one week. Just last week, ending March 21st, March 15th to March 21st, there were 3.28 million jobless claims, and I'll play some of the highest ranking states there on the screen before you, you have Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Illinois. It's all over the country. It is not discriminating. Now, this is a thing that I could have predicted. Okay, you're talking about what quadruple the previous record in one week? Of course. What else is going to happen when you forcibly close businesses down? When you incite panic from the media, from the government and everywhere else that says, oh, well, if you go outside, you're going to spread the virus. You might kill your grandmama, this, that, and the third if you get the virus. That's causing people to be out of work. And be clear, this is just unemployment claims. We're not talking about those that are still employed, but are underemployed. You understand? So let's say you were getting 35 hours a week consistently. Now you're down to 15 hours or 10 hours or five hours, maybe even zero hours. Maybe you're told, hey, hold on for a minute. We'll wait until Easter and then we'll come back. But you've not necessarily been fired. Okay, what if you are on commission, but you're not getting a commission anymore or you're getting much less commission because you have less foot traffic? What if you are a restaurant worker where you were relying on tips, but since you can't get anybody into the dining area of the restaurant, you're relegated to just handing out food at the front door. You're not getting the money that you would have gotten from the tips because you can't have anybody inside the actual dining area. There are a lot of industries that are being affected by this, not just those that are unemployed. People are making less money overall, even if they can't necessarily file for unemployment insurance. So this number is very troubling. Like I said, quadruple the previous record. What are we going to do about this? I think the solution is clear. You know, the whole stimulus thing, that's fine. Okay, you're handing out money, 1200 bucks. If you make less than 75000 okay, that's fine. Kids get money, whatever. Bailouts for industry that need to be bailed out. I get it. That's all great. Fantastic. $2 trillion, $8 trillion, $100 trillion, whatever. People really need to get back to work. This is what I'm talking about. How long can we just maintain this? How long can this go on? Not very long because two weeks prior to this 3.28 million number, two weeks prior, we had 211,000 or so jobless claims, which was close to a half century low. It was very good. The economy was doing very well. But then when you shut everything down, you induce mass panic. People are going buying toilet paper, paper towels, tinfoil hats, whatever they can find. Now people can't go to work. They're being told to stay home, self-quarantine, social distancing. And what's the result? 3.28 million jobless claims. Are you surprised? You shouldn't be because right when they announced they were going to shut everything down, they were going to close everything down. You can't go to a restaurant or a beauty supply store or a barbershop or whatever. I knew the next thing would be massive unemployment. The stimulus has not even been passed yet. It got passed by the Senate and the presidency, the White House, but you still got the House that must vote on it. And for some reason, they're not going to vote until Friday. I'm not sure what else they got to do. I mean, it's not like they can really do anything else because everything is shut down. They can't go to events. They can't go to any kind of training seminar. What else are they really doing? Like, vote on it right now. Why are you trying to delay this? Are you trying to delay it so it won't be in Americans' minds? Be clear. This is most certainly in America's minds. Okay, I'm seeing letters on the internet. Not sure if they're true or false, but it could be. One thing I saw was where an entire apartment complex, 32 units, signed a letter to their landlord to say, hey, we're not paying the rent this month because we don't have it. What are you going to do? He's like, well, what can I do? Can I evict them? Can I get the police on my side? I mean, this this is a really big mess. Now they're trying to say, well, uh, Southern Hemisphere is starting to get cold and they're starting to have more cases and we might get hit again in November. 
So what are we going to do if there is no vaccine? Can we afford to go on lockdown again? We can't even afford what's going on right now. It's not even been two full weeks yet. And we're talking about doing it again or extending the time we have going on right now. The virus has killed about a thousand Americans. As far as we know, could be more because the test wasn't available up until recently. So people could have had it like in December and January, because remember, Trump had to shut off the flights coming from China before that they were still coming. So there's a gap in time in between when the virus first started in China and then when the flights from China were shut off, there's a gap. So they could have been coming over here with the virus, spreading it, giving it to people. And nobody knows anything the wiser because it's not been named yet. It's not been claimed yet. It's just kind of a thing out there. People were talking about, oh, I had a respiratory infection in January or December. Doctors didn't know what it was. They gave me some Tylenol and then our butyrol treatment and say, go home. Okay. So people could have been affected back then, but didn't know. But I'll move on. The point is that a thousand have died in the U.S. that we know of so far. How long are we going to just try to keep that number low? You understand? And not even really be successful. People are saying that they've gotten it despite being under quarantine, wearing the gloves, social distancing, all this, that, and the third. We have to get back to life. We don't stop life for the flu. Now, but before anybody says, don't compare the virus to the flu, I'm not comparing uh, the China virus to the flu as far as viruses or whatever. I'm talking about the reaction to human tragedy, to death, to the destruction. People are saying, oh, it's more contagious. We don't really know because we don't know who has it and who doesn't. We've not done the testing. I think we need to just get these drugs out there, the hydroxychloroquine, not chloroquine phosphate, but I'll move on. Get these drugs out there, get it to hospitals, get respirators or whatever you need and get the country back rolling. We cannot afford to do this too much more. We can't sustain it. 3.28 million jobless claims. Now you got some nuts on the line talking about, oh, it's Trump's fault. How was it Trump's fault? How does it make any sense? Like you have a virus that has shut down the country to a certain extent. How was that anything to do with Trump? People say, oh, he was talking about it's not really that bad. It's a hoax. It's that. And the third Trump was just trying to calm the people and not spread panic. Which one to do say, oh, well, the virus is coming. Hunker down. The civil unrest that we will be experiencing right now will be off the charts. This whole thing with the toilet paper will be nothing. If people, people will be getting shot in the streets. It will be all kind of violent actions happening because of the panic. Your job as a president is to do many things. But the main thing is to exude calm, preach calm, not panic. The panic is not going to help at all. That's not going to cure the virus. That'll make the situations around the virus much worse. So as I close, I want to say this. You see the number. You know how it's a record. You know how the economy was doing before all the shutdown stuff. The question you got to ask yourself and others that still want to be quarantined is, how much longer can we do this? Is it sustainable? I think the answers would be not much longer, if not, not any amount of time longer. And no, we can't sustain it. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that I'm correct in saying that we cannot sustain this joblessness, the ever increasing unemployment? Because don't get it twisted. The 3.28 million that's just the beginning. It's going to get worse if we don't reverse this trend of shutting everything down. They're talking about trying to keep things shut down in some places up until almost May. There's no way we can afford that. Within two weeks, not even two full weeks, you have 3.28 million jobless claims, probably many more that are underemployed, that were self-employed and can't necessarily get unemployment insurance. It, it could be closer to five or six million that have been affected negatively to the point where they can't pay their bills, maybe even more than that. And it's only going to increase as time continues to go on. You got companies trying to hold on, dipping into their savings, taking out loans, foregoing their own expenses, but they can't do that for too much longer. One more week is about all you got. And if you go longer than that, it's going to be a problem. Am I saying the right things? Am I saying the wrong things? Whatever your thoughts are, 
please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.